One thing that I think is a really important distinction to talk about is some people might be confused about how can I go and take this model that took millions of Jensen's highly powered chips to build and then go run it on my computer? Like, how is that possibly going to perform in the same way? And it's a difference between training and inference. So training being what makes the model smart and gives it the intelligence. And that's where you're going through all of the data and you're looking at the weights and we go into how all of that works and how GPTs work. But that's heavily a compute intensive part. Then you've got inference, which is asking it the questions. Once the model is really smart, you can ask it the questions. And to do inference, you need data storage and you need compute. The storage to actually store the models So taking this brain that's been trained by thousands of computers and how big is the brain and what size computer can we fit it on? The bigger the model, the bigger the computer you need, but then also accessing the brain and the bandwidth, you need compute there too. And what we're sort of seeing is the convergence of the models getting smarter and therefore they're getting smaller. So you need a smaller brain to put onto the computer, but we're also seeing computer chips get better so that we can interact with them in a fast way. And we're sort of at the perfect point now whereby models like OpenAI has just produced. You can actually download this and run this on your computer if your computer has enough compute. And what we'll see soon is being able to run models on phones as well. So I don't know if you can do this yet. We probably with some, you can, but this is going to become commonplace within the next six to 12 months. 